once again here to leave you from Bahamas snorkel diving. After five years of building my own YouTube channel and to refit my boat along the way, the time was finally in place to set sail for my biggest adventure in my sailing career. I wanted to sail around the Norwegian Sea alone. Starting from my hometown of Haugesund, my plan was to reach all the way up to beautiful Lofoten to get into position, ready to take the big leap into the huge Norwegian Sea and hopefully make landfall on the volcanic island of John Mayen. Further on, the plan was to reach Greenland, but icing made it a little too dangerous. So the course was set to the enormous fjords of Iceland to experience the raw nature being unfolded. From here, the course was to be set into familiar waters through the Faroe Islands, Fula and Shetland before sliding along over the good old North Sea to find my berth back in Haugesund. A 2,400 nautical mile journey was completed. That's it. Since I were a child, I have always loved to be told stories. Now let me tell you mine about sailing around the Norwegian Sea. It was a fine day in my hometown of Haugesund. The winds were playing with the pennants on the city bridge, telling me this was a perfect day to start my journey. I was all set and my mom and her husband came down to say goodbye and to wish me well. <laughs> yeah. Have a nice trip, my Thank dear. You. What do you think? Do you feel safe? Yeah. Yes? I am. You're That's a good. great sailor. Yes, thank you. And I That's love good. you. And you. I love you too. Thank you. You know, okay. <laughs> I am totally in love with island communities. So every stop on this expedition was focused on finding the most remote and beautiful islands possible. So naturally, my first stop was to be the most westerly islands of Norway, 100 nautical miles northwards along the coast, called Utvar. But to get to this little pearl, I had to spend one night and one day to get there. With the boat all prepared with everything I needed to get northwards, there were no more waiting. The journey could begin. Saying goodbye to my mom was a special feeling this time, because I did not know what I was getting myself into. But having a solid positive attitude and a strong belief that I could do this fueled my mind and gave me a good feeling when I let go of the lines. Okay. Hello. Some slight rain and westerly breeze teased my sails inshore while getting the sheets hoisted. But once out on the open coastline, heading north, the wind picked up and pushed us firmly along the course line. At this point, it really came clear that I was actually on my way. Yeah, welcome back again. It's been, uh, been uh, some weeks, but uh, five months of preparing the boat is now over. It's been tons of work and the stress has almost uh, take the best of me, but uh, with a positive mindset, it's incredible uh, how far you can get. So, I made it so far now. Just departed uh, Haugesund and uh, I'm uh, passing Sletta now and going inshore northwards towards the, the first destination of uh, Utvar, the most uh, westerly point in Norway and that's my first stop and just a couple of hours to take a rest, it's about uh, 17 hours up there and then I'm gonna go uh, get going to, to the next places. 
So finally, finally I'm here. I'm so excited. <laughs> I have uh, butterflies in my stomach for the last week now. Didn't sleep tonight. So let's let's see how this goes. Love it. The nightfall came slowly upon me as I slided into the inshore route, grabbing the chance to have some calm waters before later heading out along the open coastline again. So uh, the time is 2.30 now. It's uh, not too dark, but uh, I'm going in the inshore route, so it's a good, good uh, visibility. But I need to stay awake. It's a lot of turns and twists and navigation to, to, to get around here. And uh, I'm heading out offshore in a couple of hours. So I'm looking forward to, to close my eyes for 15-20 uh, minutes. in the morning I've not been sleeping for uh, since uh, last uh, morning now it's about 20 hours since last sleep and uh, we're passing the lighthouse of uh, Mark Stay now outside Bergen that's uh, actually where the shuttle race uh, goes up so it's a regatta from Bergen over to Shetland every June every year so I'm, I'm, the wind is uh, <laughs> pretty perfect to sail now, I'm going by engine, but I'm really considering getting this mainsail up and, uh, and, uh, and the headsail. You just have to man up and uh, get a little bit more, five minutes of, more of the rest and I'm going to do it. of land still and uh, it's uh, about 30 nautical miles to go and uh, yeah things are good full full main sail and uh, 24 knots of wind downwind and we are going in uh, seven eight knots so but it's terrible rain but anyway it's good and we're having a great time oh good whoops my left to uh, Utwag. So next thing to do is to take down the sails and get the engine running and find myself find a way in. Never been here before. There's a lot of scary here so I uh, have to take it easy. Can't wait to get inside. Closing into the archipelagos is fairly easy and it's fascinating how quickly the ocean flattens once you get deeper in between the scaries. The tiny harbor sits very protected all the way into the island channel. Nobody no more lives here, but during summertime the houses are used as holiday cottages. And what a place to spend the summer. So that's me all tied up in uh, Utvag and I'm really tired. Uh, I'm gonna go get some eat, get some to eat, something to eat now and then I'm just gonna go play to bed and have a good night's sleep to, until tomorrow morning. I'm ready for the next uh, leg. It's gonna be uh, another tough one, but uh, that's life. I, I like it, I love it. All right, good night.
Early next morning, after having a nice coffee and breakfast, I was again prepared for another long leg. Today, my plan was to go all the 170 nautical miles up to the incredible island of Grip, 30 hours sailing away. With the mainsail already hoisted before letting the lines, I was ready to take on the long open coastline ahead of me. On the way out, the mainsail sheet decided to suddenly cut loose. After a quick fix, I went in between the shoals, leaving the entrance for open water. Today, the weather gods gave me 25 knots of suddenly perfect downwind. That meant that I could mount the spinnaker pole, and have my sails spreaded, just like a big butterfly. And I was flying against my destination. But when things are getting good, there is a slight chance of sudden setbacks. Just lost my Phantom 4 advanced. I was flying around in my boat, trying to show the spread its sails with the boom. And then it just started to spin, probably a propeller uh, uh, broke or something, and it just spin down from uh, 100 meters and plunged straight into the sea, just aft of the boat. So look, I didn't get hit. All right, so that's the third or fourth drone destroyed. So I'm gonna, but I have a spare one. I have a spare one, a Phantom 4. And I'm gonna, gonna start it up and uh, get the shots I'm looking for. That's life. So with a positive mindset, I kept going northwards and the predicted strong gale starting to overtake me. The wind has picked up now, 22, 20, 20, 25 knots, it's amazing, lounging, downwind, spread the sails with the boom, and uh, yeah, life is good, so we'll see, but this is amazing sailing, just amazing, wow, it's been a long time since, since I did this kind of downwind sailing, perfect conditions. The evening set in and it was time for a course change. I was about halfway and closing into the cliffs of Stutt. And with this, the wind slowly died out and turned almost all the way around against me. About to pass uh, the, the, the place of Stutt, one of the most feared uh, open oceans, so, uh, if not the most feared open coastline along the Nor Nor Norwegian coast. We have uh, 12 knots of wind now, and it's coming this way, and I'm going that way now. So I have to take down my sails after this uh, fantastic uh, day of sailing. But everything has to come to an end, and uh, I think I'm gonna go for motor maybe the rest of the way to grip because uh, the wind is against me all the way tomorrow the wind went away sails got recovered and engine came on after passing stutt the dark set in Keeping well off the coast, I went down under to get some rest to gather energy for the last 95 nautical miles to grip. Ooh, 
finally, after 15 hours of motoring now, listening to the engine, I'm finally uh, at uh, beautiful island stuff. Rip. You can see him out here. This is the one. Amazing place. So I can't wait to get inside there and to uh, tie up my boat and have a rest. Approaching the archipelago is a breathtaking experience coming from offshore. Way out in the ocean on its own rock thrones Norway's second highest lighthouse. It was built in 1888 and with its 44 meters this cast iron tower watches over the incredible tiny island of Grip. This is also the area where my mom grew up in her childhood. Thank you. What do you think? Do you feel safe? Yeah, you're That's a good. great sailor. Yes, thank you. When I was four years old, she took us all here. So seeing this again today was a very special feeling. That's grip and uh, all tied up uh, in this beautiful island and uh, it's really nice here. It's about, uh, the sun is about to go down now so I'm gonna have a look and uh, see how that looks and uh, then have a good night's sleep. Be ready for Halton tomorrow, 13-14 hours sailing and uh, yeah looking forward to it. It's gonna be wind quiet and a lot of engine but uh, as long as I get for, get get forward, I'm uh, happy. So these little guys, the tires there, they're making a lot of noise. So I don't uh, hope they're gonna keep me awake tonight, but uh, we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Good night. Next morning, I was ready to depart for the island of Halten, 82 nautical miles or 13 hours sailing away. The island is the most northern of the 40 nautical mile belt of small islands known as Fruan. The departure started up with getting my rudder tangled up in some mooring lines. <laughs> Look at that, man. After good help of getting released, I slided into some thick fog lying as a sheet all over the coast this morning. There were absolutely no wind reported the next 48 hours, so having a good stack of diesel on board was coming to good use. Well, there's a thick fog this morning and I'm on my way inshore now in, uh, the, around the inside Smöla and uh, yeah seems to be like a big layer of fog around me so it's not gonna go away anytime soon. That's exciting. I like it. Just gonna keep a watch on my radar and watch out for boats coming. Being surrounded by fog can be a scary experience when you're not able to see more than a few meters around you. But if we had wings and we were able to fly straight up in the air, 
we would be surprised to see how thin the layer of fog actually is, and how sudden the blue sky reveals itself, like another world. But looking straight down again on our boat, you will see how much of an impact that thin layer has to our visibility. So having a radar in this situation is very calming. Soon the fog let go and a beautiful landscape evolved slowly. Smyrla is packed with thousands of small islands, skerries and rocks. So reading the map and planning a course line is crucial to find your way safely through. And once we got through, the ocean way opened up widely. as we passed the lighthouse of Hjegla, the northernmost point of Smyrla. Further on, we were closing into the sound between Freya and Hitra, and it was time for a slightly needed stopover. Fifteen degrees in the water, and uh, I'm seriously considering uh, taking a bath. I haven't been showering for uh, Five days and I stink and my skin is sticky. Uh, so I think I'm gonna stop the boat and man up. Yeah, let's check the propeller as well. both the captain and propeller, it was time to push on northwards. Look at this. The water is just completely still. I've never seen anything like it on a long time. This is one of the open coastlines of Norway. When the storm is raging here, it's, it's, it's frightening. But look at this. It was time for another luxurious meal, consisting of tin canned meatballs and gravy. No matter what, all food on board a moving boat tastes excellent, especially when you can enjoy it together with a sunset. On my way I passed Sauöya, or Sheep Island, another old fishing community before entering the evening sunset, giving me a warm welcome towards my destination of Halten. It's obvious that this is another bird island with seagulls nesting in every possible corner available. It was amazing to come in here being assisted by other friendly boaters. But it was late and time for a nap, getting ready for another day northwards. During the morning hours, the fog had found its way back. Even if it's not the most welcome sight during sailing, it gives the scenery around Halton a mysterious and adventurous atmosphere. Today Halton, like most of the other old fishing communities, consists entirely of holiday houses during summertime. I can only imagine to live among such beautiful environments. So 
it was time to fill some diesel now. Uh, I'm uh, not empty, but I'm about half full, and uh, I have a lot of diesel with me. I have this uh, four 20 liter cans here, three down here, and uh, one in the bunk here under, and one in under the bunk here, and one under the bunk at the head. So a total of 300, 340 liters I can carry. That's about 600 nautical miles, so should be all set for uh, your mine in Greenland with that range, I hope. So let's go. Another 120 nautical miles or 20 hours of sailing was ahead of me. I had a long trip across the open coastline to the city of Brønnøysund. I needed some more supplies and a gear oil change before proceeding towards Lofoten. This is also a nice point to head inshore along the famous inshore coast of Helgelandskysten. Sailing on completely flat water made it a thrill just to tumble along the Norwegian coast into the evening. A beautiful sunset accompanied me together with my cup of coffee. On these latitudes the sun sinks just under the horizon, keeping it slightly light through the night. Next morning I reached the archipelago and I could set my course in towards Brønnøysund. The only available berth was all the way in between all the floating ducks which were packed with boats. I took the chance to slide my boat all the way in until I could tie up safely and have some hours of relaxation again. Yes, that's uh, Brennesund and uh, I'm tied up here because uh, it's going to be sunny tomorrow so no, it's no uh, point in uh, going through the most amazing coast of Norway in rain today so I'm going to wait here and uh, Waiting for the sun tomorrow and depart through Helgeland's Kysten. It's going to be awesome. And when I lie here, I also will change the the gear of my uh, the, the oil on my gear. Um, uh, it's a good good chance to do that. It's uh, got the hours now, so I need to change it. Yeah. Otherwise, all good. Just have to wait. Early next morning, I got ready and lurked my way out of the harbor. I had a long day of sailing awaiting, but with a good night's sleep, I was ready. The nature along the coast was now altering shape with thousands of small islands and huge mountains rising up from the ocean, forming what is known as Helgelandskysten. You can sail for weeks around these waters. Everywhere is a paradise for kayaking, climbing, camping, hikes and whatever else one would like to do. This is the place to be. But I had a goal to reach Lofoten, 
to get into position for the big leap crossing the Norwegian Sea over to Jan Mayen. So with no time to lose, I proceeded northwards through this amazing coastline. Tonight's destination was the conspicuous island of Trena, 70 nautical miles away or 12 hours of sailing. On this leg I would also cross the Arctic Circle at a latitude of 66 degrees north, which meant that I was entering Arctic waters. Ooh! I crossed the polar circle, 66 degrees north, and that means that I'm entering Arctic waters, the cold and the harsh environment in the north. I love it. It's not much uh, reminding you of Arctic uh, conditions uh, right now. It's uh, 19 degrees in the air and uh, 10 knots of wind. The sun is shining, but it's going to be a lot tougher, I guess when uh, I start the real big trip across the north, across the Norwegian Sea. Wow! Amazing! Yeah! I think it's time for a new bath. I'm stinking again. Let's do this. After a quick round with the soap and a homemade cockpit shower, we proceeded into the waters of the Arctic Circle. A mighty shape had figured in the horizon almost all the way from Brennesund. After several hours of sailing, the shape finally started revealing itself. I passed the scaries of Åsvaret before entering open waters again. Here, on a lonely rock called Andersbakken, sits the 18.5 meter tall Åsvar lighthouse. Built 1876, it has been keeping watch here for the last 144 years. From its proud spot, it also looks over to the neighbor across the ocean. The mysterious shape and the mighty rock of Luvund. This enormous creation, reaching 625 meters over sea level, is the center point for mariners navigating around Helgelandskysten as it is visible for miles and miles away from all angles. Being close up to this rock with my tiny little boat, we felt smaller than ants compared to this marvel. We could barely be seen down there from the top of it. Another spectacular sight from these heights is our destination for the evening. Trena Island, 50 nautical miles further offshore. And with the sunset wind catching, we plunge our way towards northwest. Finally some wind, 40 knots from east, so I'm uh, motor sailing the last bit out to, uh, to Trena now. Amazing ride, but it was good to have some wind in the sail again. So uh, yeah, looking really much forward to to getting out to this island now and uh, relax a little bit, and have a beer. Yeah, good. Approaching this place is impressive, 
you are totally surrounded by tall rocks and cliffs in all shapes wherever you look. And I felt really lucky to be here and to now make anchor for the first time during this journey. So that's Trena, look at that, wow! I'm gonna drop my uh, anchor now and just uh, anchor somewhere around here. It's a little bit uh, wind towards land but it's, it's uh, not too much so I'm gonna give it a go. good that's really good Ooh, finally there all right I'm gonna enjoy this stay at anchor and have a rest see you tomorrow Inside a breakwater, sir, and look around. I had a walk around the island to have a look at what life was like here. It's incredible to see how nice the old houses are being taken care of. It's like traveling 100 years back in time. They even have their own beach if they want to take a swim in the crystal clear water. Seen from the air, it's like the impressive mountains is wrapped around the little community, protecting it from the harsh, violent weather that can occur around these waters. After a nice hike, it was time to get going northwards. I was lucky enough to get a new drone to be sent to the city of Buda, so I needed to take a quick stop here before going to Lufoten. So we slided into another sunset again. So that's uh, us on our way from Trena to Buda, but I will take a little stop in a place called Miken, a nice little island. I uh, just want to see it. Uh, and then we go to Buda tomorrow, pick up the drone, and then proceed to Vare, the final destination before uh, we hit uh, the ocean to Jan Mayen. So we are getting very near now, finally. It's getting exciting. Three hours later, we entered the little island of Myken. Entering is very easy, following the channel until the lagoon opens up. Myken is another fishing community and has only nine inhabitants together with the holiday houses. It's very sheltered for mariners, so dropping your anchor here will in most cases give you a good night of sleep. So that's us uh, anchored in uh, uh, Myken and uh, it's a rat race. Uh, tomorrow it's Buda going to bed, relaxing, last uh, bit tomorrow before Vare to get my drone. All right, good night.
Good morning again. Just departed from uh, Myken and I'm uh, going uh, heading for a Buda. It's a eight hour sail by engine, another day by engine. So I've done 500 miles by engine now altogether. <laughs> so I'm, I miss the wind. I hope there can be some wind soon now. So uh, yeah, just go up to Buda and get my drone and then head out to Vare, as I said and uh, wait for the for the weather to your Mayan and Greenland. Yeah. With all these motor hours, it's important to move the body to keep the blood pump going every now and then. And to eat some healthy food on the way. This will also keep you more motivated and fueled with energy. I can do it if I really want. I know, I know. After only seeing grey open ocean for seven hours, I needed some inshore eye candy. So I set my course through the islands of Flainvær as these rocks lies just on my course line to Bude. It's really nice to slide slowly in between the narrow sounds created by this landscape. Flainvær consists of a number of small islands, rocks and skerries. Some say that there's just as many islands as it is days in a year. And archaeological examens shows that there has been people here since year 800. Then, after a couple of more hours, Buddha popped up on my bow. So that's uh, Buddha in my bow. Gonna be inside uh, within five minutes. Uh, I never thought I was gonna reach it. It was a long way by engine now, so uh, we're here and uh, yeah, gonna pick up the drone and have a relaxing stay, it's gonna be uh, rain and uh, wind quiet the next day, days now and the wind is uh, coming against me uh, towards uh, Jan Mayen, so I might stay in port for two, three days, we'll see. Bude is the second largest city in the north of Norway. It's a very popular place for tourists, especially the ones coming by boat. Today the harbor was absolutely packed and I had to take my time before I found a nice couple to invite me alongside. Can you me the It's full. Finally, I could turn off the engine and have a good night rest, getting ready for the last leg tomorrow. Early next morning, my new drone arrived. The last days had burned a lot of fuel, so it was time for a refill of all the cans and main tank. Then it was off for the last leg. Okay, leaving Bude, heading for the final destination now. Vare, beautiful Vare. And it's a 40 mile uh, trip up there. I think maybe the wind is against me. So we'll see, so I, I just want to get up there. I hope I can sail, but uh, we'll see. Yeah. On my way, I sailed through the islands of Hellivar. Then I rounded the Cardinal Boy, marking the north side of these islands. From here, we entered Westfjorden. Which 
I had to cross to get out to Vareuil. A northwesterly breeze to my nose made it a fairly bumpy ride. Halfway now in Westfuren between uh, the shores behind me and uh, on uh, Vare in the bow. The wind has picked up a little bit, and, uh, but it's all good. The sun is uh, coming out and uh, <laughs> I'm really closing in now. Approaching Vare is a powerful statement that we are now well into Lufoten and in an Arctic environment. Closing into the bay of Mostavika takes your breath away when the huge walls of stone surrounds you the deeper in you get. Finally I could make my anchor ready and find my spot just outside the beautiful white beach. The whole thing felt pretty spectacular and surreal. I was here, at my launch point to the Norwegian Sea. Cheers. So that's us, all anchored up in Mostavika on Vare. So I will stay here now, this is the last port before uh, the Norwegian Sea and Jan Mayen. I'm just gonna relax a little bit and charge my batteries. And uh, yeah, ready for the, for, for the next big round in a, in a few. All right, good night. So this is my first video of sailing around the Norwegian Sea. Next time, I want you to join me crossing the dangerous oceans over to the incredible volcanic spectacle of Jan Mayen. Four days of sailing and 500 nautical miles westwards. An enormous amount of work has been laid down to tell you my story the way I see it in my mind. This is my way of bringing you into my little fantasy world. Your support is greatly appreciated to bring you this material. Check out my Facebook and Instagram, support me on Patreon or PayPal, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also get your t-shirts and merch following the links in the video description. Thank you for watching, I hope you got inspired and remember, fear is only lack of knowledge. So stand up, get ready and get knowledge. See you soon, Eric. And I'll see you inside when uh, things are getting a little bit more calm. All right, let's do this.